Hello and welcome to Down the Vent. My name's Joe and today we're going to attempt to harness the power of the gods in Invictus. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at how to play Invictus. So, um, I have the game set up here for two players. I do want to state that these are prototype material, so... Um, since this game is searching for funding on Kickstarter right now, a lot of this could change. Um, uh, just keep that in mind. So. so, Invictus is a deck building game where you will be buying different cards to increase your hand or your deck and attempting to essentially dominate the other player. Um, this does go up to six players and there's teams where you play like 3v3 or 2v2. It's a lot of fun, so that way... Because there is, can be a player elimination in this game if you are killed off too many times in the game. But um, once one person kind of dies on your team, it's pretty much over anyways, unless you can make some sort of astonishing comeback. So um, dying is very bad and hurt for your team. So it is deck building where you are attacking the other team. Okay? You will start with six cards in your deck. So let's go ahead and go over what these are real quick. You start with um, what is called... These are different names already, but what I have listed is Prisma, which is essentially the money that you will spend in the game, or energy, yellow energy um, triangles or tokens. Um, you will start with one Gladius, which is a sword, which is, can either do 10 damage to someone in range, or can be a fire energy. And then you have the Clinker, which is just no energy whatsoever, it's just kind of like a garbage card. The cool part about this game is that normally in deck builders you have to have like some sort of special ability or a special card that allows you to call your deck. Not in Invictus, you essentially pay the cost in the bottom right hand corner, if you can see that, and it says destroy, and then with the number. If you pay one Prisma on your turn, then you can get rid of that card from your hand. You can do that with almost, I think, or every card in the game actually, so like even the Prismas you can pay two to destroy if you get better. Uh, money generating cards in your hand, you don't want to draw the one uh, generation anymore. So that's what everyone starts with in their hand, those six cards, and you'll have a hand size of five cards. So you're going to be going through your deck a lot faster in this game compared to other deck builders where normally you start with 10 or 12 cards, um, so you're getting, the, you're getting the things that you're buying into your hand much quicker. Uh, the other important thing to note is that each character here has special abilities. So the theme of this game are the Greek mythology, or Greek gods, are fighting amongst each other, but they have like this really cool, like futuristic looking uh, armor and stuff like that. So there's Aphrodite and Artemis. They don't look like the old school Aphrodite and Artemis, do they? Um, so I randomly just chose a couple of uh, gods here, and um, got the game set up. So you also have this other board here. So, besides having your couple of special abilities, which I'll go over here in a second, you have accuracy, fire rate, and range. And then on here is like a little quick reference guide, which I think is awesome that you have that for every player, just to look at real quick and realize what they can do on their turn. Um, and you'll see these numbers down here. I'll, I'll get to all this. So, accuracy is your chance of hitting someone when you attack. So, when you attack, you don't just do damage. You're going to flip over one of these uh, power cards here, and if it matches one of your accuracy tokens, you will hit. So I flip this one over. I have a red accuracy token uh, right now. That's what everyone starts the game with. So I would hit. So I have a 25% chance to hit because there is red, green, blue, and purple. So um, accuracy can be upgraded, though. As you can see here, it costs four, and you can choose one of the other three colors and put it on your board. So now when you flip a red or a green, you will hit. And say I bought another, paid six more, I could put that one out. So now I have a pretty good chance to hit every time I swing, because uh, if I pull a red, green, or purple, my attack will hit. But starting the game, you only have red. Fire rate. That is interesting. So normally in a deck builder, right, you can just play all the cards in your hand and just do whatever they say. Not in this one. So fire rate is how many times you can attack on your turn. You start off with just one attack. If you pay four, you can now attack twice on a turn, and if you pay six more, you'll be able to attack three times. So if you're piling all these swords up into your hand, you're going to start dealing out some massive damage. And then, the last one here is range. So range, 
can be upgraded for six, and then six more. So you start with a range of one, which means I can attack the person to my left or my right. In a two-player game, range isn't that important. In a six-player game where I need to hit someone that's three, four away from me, I'm going to need to be upgrading my range, otherwise I'm only going to be able to hit the people on the sides. The good thing to note, though, is that you kill the, if you kill the person on one of the flanks, they no longer count against your range, but if you're in the middle of your two uh, teammates, then uh, you'll, you need at least two range to start hitting the enemy. Um, range will come to effect sometimes with healing as well, so if I'm on a flank and I need to heal the person two to my left, then I'm going to have to increase my range even to heal them. Um, then we'll look at the main hero board as well. So at the bottom you have your hit points, Aphrodite starts with 150, um, and then Artemis starts with 170. So Aphrodite has two abilities here. The first one is Sweet Talk, which is unlimited, which says if you purchase a boost, that's what these cards are here, the boost cards, uh, view the top three cards of the boost deck, choose one, and return the other two cards to the top of the deck in any order. So that's pretty powerful, because you could purchase a boost card before making an attack, and then you can almost will make a better chance of being able to hit with your attack. The other one is Lacerate, and as you can see here, this one costs a red and a blue element, or energy, to use. So flip a boost card, if it, which are these, if it's green or blue, uh, deal 20 damage to an enemy in range, so they still have to be close to me. Um, if it's not green or blue, though, I'll just deal 10 damage, so I'll still do something, but not as powerful as it could have been. Artemis here has two abilities as well. The first one is Orion, which is a counter. So counters can only be played um, usually not on your turn, and they'll be triggered by whatever it says at the top of the counter. So this one says, if an enemy's standard attack or character ability reduces your health, flip a boost card. If it's green or purple, you deal 10 damage to them. That cannot be blocked. So you'll just hit them back and do a little bit, just a little bit of damage. Uh, the other one is Piercing Rounds. This one takes a green energy and a blue energy to trigger. And this says, deal 20 damage to an enemy in range. Again, range is very important. If damage is dealt, pick an enemy adjacent to the original targeted enemy, if any, and deal 10 damage to them. So, that's pretty cool. She can Artemis can hit two people on a turn instead of just one. So, we'll just go ahead and go through how uh, a round is played or two here real quick. So, as you can see, I got a Clinker, I got three Prisms, and I got Gladius. Well, Gladius I can either attack with here, so it, ha it can either be a Spire Energy or 10 damage. So I can attempt to attack or I can try to do something else here. So let me go ahead first and um, I'm going to take this 3 Energy, or 3 Prisma, and actually use it for Prisma. So I'm going to gain 3 Prisma here. And I can buy any of these cards here that have 3 or less in the bottom of them. So like this one has a 3 cost. Relic of Sticks has a one cost, etc. So, to do my ability, uh, Aphrodite's ability, I need a red and I need a blue energy. So I went ahead, I'm going to buy this for one, and put that, when you buy a card, it goes to your discard pile. I'm going to use another Prisma, here we'll do this, so I'm going to use another Prisma now to destroy my Clinker, so that's out of the game, for the rest of the game, I don't have to worry about that, and I have re one Prisma left, so... I think I'm going to spend it, and I'm actually going to purchase an elixir here, because uh, this can help me uh, with healing and stuff like that. So. Now the Gladius. Gladius. I can either attack with it this turn, and chance hitting, or once per turn you can take a card and you can charge it. So I'm going to go ahead and charge that. That means on later turns I can use this card, but only for its energy. So I can only use it for this fire energy here. And I can only charge a card if it matches one of my abilities, the energy needed for one of my abilities. Put this back in the mix. So now that that's her turn, so she'll go ahead and uh, draw a card here, and then you'll shuffle your cards whenever you need to draw and you don't have any. Shuffle your discard pile, and then draw back up to five. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm really hoping I got this blue relic of sticks in my hand, because on my next turn then I can perform my last red ability, and there it is. So now we'll go to Artemis' turn now. So Artis, Artemis has Gladius here. So Artemis is doesn't want to play around. They want to go ahead and attack with Gladius. So they're going to play that and attempt to deal damage to one character in range, only Aphrodite. So they need a... actually, pause. Artemis is going to get down to, to doing damage. They want to make sure they can kill it. So they're going to kill their opponent. 
So they're going to spend four Prisma, and they're going to take purple and put that there. So now their accuracy is red or purple. And then they'll play Gladius here, and now they have to try to hit. So they'll flip up by a power card. Oh, and luckily they chose purple. It hits, and they'll deal ten damage to Aphrodite. Um, Aphrodite does have a couple cards here. Some of them can be used to, like, uh, heal and things like that, or to block damage, but none of the cards I have. So, like, these two blue cards block, but this would actually take damage from one of my allies and let, allow me to absorb it instead. Um, but I just needed it for the energy. Alright, so now we go back to Aphrodite's turn. So Aphrodite's going to start off her turn by spending two Prisma to purchase the boost card. Uh, Aphrodite's Sweet Talk ability, whenever I purchase a boost card, lets me draw the top three and then put uh, pick one and put the others back in any order on the top of the deck. So, I'm just going to play this open here. So, Chimera allows me to place it in front of another player and then they'll take damage every turn until a red or blue card is drawn. So that sounds pretty good. Um, and then, I want to play Elixir to attempt to heal myself. To heal myself, though, I need a green or a purple. So I want the purple to be on top so I can heal myself. Then I want to lacerate, and when I lacerate, if I flip a green or a blue, I'll deal extra damage. So I want the blue to be underneath. So i got to make sure I play my turn in the proper order here. So, so I'm going to play the Chimera onto Artemis, which says place in front of the enemy. On their turn, flip a boost card. If it is red or blue, it is discarded, otherwise they lose 10 hit points, and then it'll repeat every turn until a red or blue is drawn. Um, next, I will play my Elixir, which I will flip a boost card, and if it is green or purple, I'll heal 10. Wait, there it is, so I'll heal back up to 150 hit points. The important thing to note is that you can never go past your, your starting uh, hit point level. Uh, the blue card I will actually use now with Gladius to perform Lacerate. So now these both will get discarded here. And it says flip a boost card if it's green or blue. And I have a funny feeling it'll be blue. Uh, deal 20 damage to an enemy in range. So Artemis takes 20 damage. So uh, as you saw, there are some different types of boost cards in the deck. There are is green, which can be played at any time. There's blue, which can only be played on a future turn. So if I drew a blue, I couldn't play it right away like I did the green card. And then there's purple, which has to be played immediately. Sometimes these are good, sometimes these are bad. It just depends on the card. Um, there's also red, which are counters, which will be saved for like later in the game. And then the other po important thing to know about boost cards is they do not count against your total um, hand size limit. So they, they won't count towards your five that you can have. So you can keep um, multiple and not have to worry about you know um, handicapping yourself the rest of the game. So, back to Artemis now. Artemis has finally gotten to a place she's really feeling good about where she's at here. So this turn, she has five Prisma to spend. So we're going to put the five Prisma down here, and we're going to buy a Reinforcement card. So Reinforcements are the last uh, cards I haven't explained, I guess. They go under this board here, and you can hold two of them um, throughout the game. If you, ever want, if you have two and you want to replace the Reinforcement, you have to pay seven because you're greedy. I don't know. It just makes sense. You have to like modify your what your reinforcements are, so you just have to pay a little bit more. It's not the same cost. But again, these cost five to buy your first and second reinforcement will be five. And that uh, there is a reminder on the back of the card here so you know how much they cost. So this reinforcement is the Nemean Lion. All standard attacks against you are reduced to zero damage while you own Nemean Lion. So that means if Aphrodite attempts to attack me with a one of these cards here, because those are standard attacks it will deal zero damage to me. So, um, Aphrodite is really going to have to focus on using Lacerate. Um, and then they have one card left, which is Zephos, and uh, they're going to go ahead and attack and try to hit Aphrodite for 20 more damage. So when you red or purple, ah, it was a miss. So, as, it, as you can see, that's essentially how the game is played. Um, there's other cards that have different abilities in here. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of reinforcements that you can go through and a ton of different boost cards that you can get. Um, if you ever reach the end of the boost card stack, then Apocalypse will, tr will trigger, which essentially takes the game into, like, uh, sudden death type mode. So if there's multiple players with health above 40, they'll get down to 10 hit points. 
But if there's people above 40 and other people are below 10, or if there's someone above 40 and everyone else is below 40, um, everyone below 40 just is dead. So, um, and then you can't be revived the rest of the game. So it, it does kind of put a time limit on the game saying, okay, you've gone through all the boost cards, which as you can see, we did here pretty quickly because um, you're flipping multiple per turn. Uh, it gets to the end quicker and quicker. So that is the basics and a, and a real quick overview of Invictus. So let's go ahead and head up and see what I think about the game. All right, so what do I think about Invictus? Well, when I got this, I asked my friends to come over and play with me a couple times here. Um... I said, they said, well, what kind of game is it? And I said, it's a deck builder. And they looked at me and they said, Joe, you don't like deck builders. Why did you get this? And I was like, it just sounds cool because you're fighting and you're using the Greek gods and it's not just building a deck to get points, right? So um, we played it and uh, I was kind of cautious about my opinion with it at first. But I really enjoyed this game. Um, the turns are fast because you don't have this giant deck. Um... And it doesn't have the cards that allow you to like draw cards, draw cards, draw cards, draw cards, and like you're playing your entire deck every turn. So I like that because I hate that in deck builders when one person gets those cards and they luck out, and then they're just overpowered the rest of the game, right? So yeah, so this is not your normal deck builder. You have a set of cards out there that everyone can purchase, and they're always available until they're gone. Um, then you have the boost cards, which are random but they're one-time use. So, it may let you draw two extra cards, but that's it. You're done. You discard it, and you don't have that ability again. So, um, first of all, I really like that part because that's the one thing I can't... Like, DC Deck Builder has an awesome theme, and I really want to love it, but when one person is just so powerful and makes you discard your three of your cards out of your hand every turn because they're cycling through their entire deck, it's not so much fun for the other players anymore. Uh, but this um, doesn't really have an issue with, the, with that. Uh, it does have player elimination. It's hard to be eliminated and have your team still be viable if you're playing in the team. Um, so that's important to note that it is it is a team game. That's how we played it mostly. And um, it, it, yeah, once you, once your kind of one teammate dies, you don't have to worry about the game going on much longer. Even if they do res you, that's going to cripple your team so badly that it's not going to matter anyways. Um, besides that, it, it's fast-paced. It's easy to learn. Um, I like that you can charge cards to be used, but only for abilities on later turns. Um, I like that your hand and card, or your, your deck size is small. Um, there's not a lot of fluff or garbage in it. It's very to the point. I also love that you can call any card in your deck just by paying the cost in the bottom right-hand corner. Like, <laughs> don't make me luck out and get a special card that lets me do it. Just let me call cards from my deck if I don't want them, right? Make me pay a cost. That's fine. I have to spend my turn essentially getting rid of cards. That's going to make me so much stronger than the rest of the game that I'm okay with spending a turn doing that. Um, and I like that it has a bit of an, like, an engine building. So, like, you can't do everything in the game. You can't be a healer and a damage dealer and trigger your abilities. You're going to have to focus on certain, certain things because it really costs to upgrade them. And that that's... It, it adds a lot. Because then when you play in a team game, you can be like, okay, I'm going to heal. Be the healer. You can be the damage dealer. I'll kind of support you in that. And then the other guy, if you have three on three, can be like, well, I'm going to deal all the damn, or I'm going to use my abilities to just, like, wreak havoc on the, 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 the board or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I really like Invictus. Um, I highly check, or highly recommend that you check out the Kickstarter page and just get some more information about it. Um, it is searching funding right now or looking for funding. I don't know. Is it searching? I don't know. It's looking for funding right now on Kickstarter. Um, I'll put a link to the uh, the campaign in the description as well, so you can check it out. But uh, yeah, Invictus, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think that people are going to be talking about this one. And the art was awesome. Um, and I just really like the Greek mythology theme, so like the Greek gods fighting. Sounded really cool to me. So Invictus, um, I recommend you check it out. Uh, and that's all I got for you today. So until next time, my name's Joe, and you've been watching Down the Vent. Bye!